we got our first dusting of snow, which only means that the snowmobile is out. But it also means that it's time to take the wheels off the can and put the tracks on. I had a lot of people ask me how, how the job is to put the tracks and switch between wheels and tracks and how long it takes. And I, my answer is, it's not bad. Uh, but I want to make a video to show you exactly what goes on and how long it takes to put the, the Camsol T4S tracks on a Can-Am Outlander. Okay, here we go. I'm going to install the tracks on the Can-Am Outlander. They're Camsol T4S tracks. Some things to keep in mind when I do this job and for timing. I do a little bit of extra stuff. I, I take, when the wheels are off, I take the time to grease all the bushings and mainly the rear U-joints. Also, this tire has a wheel bearing uh, newly installed and there, it was kind of a rush emergency job. And I just tightened the axle nut with either a pipe wrench or a adjustable wrench. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque that, set that properly. Also, this machine has the A-arm guards and uh, that's something that has to be removed to install the tracks. Just a little bit of extra time. I'm sure when you're doing this job, you'll find a little things to add on too. I have most of the tools uh, handy over there somewhere. So let's see what time. Let's see how long it takes to install these tracks. Okay, here we go. It is a currently 1.48. I use this this hoist to lift up from the top, but you can use a jack to it. It's really not, not a time saver to do this. I just have this set up. Okay, the greasing's done. I had a little issue with the grease gun. The tip was warm, so I had to replace the, the tip. To help with greasing, I actually added an extension on the hose because some of the areas you have to go are tight, so you can just leave the grease gun on the floor and you can get the hose wherever you have to go.
rents are done, 241. So that's uh, 45 minutes for the front. Let's get the rear. I'm tired of working. Hopefully this goes quicker. Actually, the left one was harder to put on than the, the right one. That's because when one wheel is on, it was the hub's able to spin and you can line up the bolts. When the track's on and you're putting the second track, you can't move the stud and uh, you have a problem there aligning the, the track on the, on the hub. That's like a um, anti, like, like a stabilizer. Yeah, a stabilizer. It's that fast or, or stabilizer or anti-rotating. So that's it. Oh, it fastens up the there so much. Yeah, it comes. With, it comes with a a bracket, a plate. You mount it one time, and then it's just one screw that goes in there. That's it. Ready to go. 320. So what time did I start? I say 155. Hour 35 minutes with extra work. Not bad. Let it snow. So I just wanted to give you a closer look on what I did and how to put this on. So you have the four original lug nuts that you just put on and tighten. In the rear you have this arm with this bracket and it's one, one bolt. And this mount you install one time when you first buy the kit. So it's one bolt on each side for the rear. There you go. And in the front, same thing. Your four lug nuts there. And then this plate just squeezes the lower A-arm, four bolts in there, tighten her down, and it's done. Also, in the track, and I do it before I put it away for storage, I, you can pop these caps off, and there's sealed bearings all inside here. I just... Uh, clean it up and spray some lube in there. I know it's sealed, 
but I just put the loop to keep the moisture from corroding things in there. And uh, these are also four season tracks. You can you can use them right now. You can use them in mud, but uh, I prefer the wheels for that, and I just put it on for winter.